Hi, I'm Streaky from streaky.com. Today, I give you some tips and tricks on high pass filtering. So high pass filtering. Now, what is high pass filtering? It is allowing the high frequencies to pass through a filter that is cutting them off at the bottom. So a bit of history on high pass filtering. In the days of everything going to vinyl, if you listen to tracks from the 60s, 70s and halfway through the 80s, everything is high pass filtered, it seems to my ears, under about 60 hertz. But I know for sure that every mastering engineer that was a big mastering engineer that I've worked with through the 90s, 2000s, their standard setting, would you believe, was to have a 40 hertz filter on everything. That was a standard procedure. And the reason why they did that is because of vinyl, of the limitations of vinyl. When you've got vinyl bass, you don't want phasey wide bass. And the more bass you have, you can't get it as loud onto the vinyl and the less and the more space you use up on the vinyl. So when you're cutting to vinyl, it was very important to put a, a high pass filter in at about 40 hertz. You get more level, get more space, and it sounds louder. So that was the kind of point of it. So if you listen to old vinyl, there used to be some, oh, I'm really going back now, but there used to be some vinyl, uh, like KTEL vinyl. And if you listen to any of the old Top of the Pops albums, these are they're like really really naff albums. It's a great illustration because they would have 18 tracks on each side, but there's literally anything under 200 hertz is gone. That's really quiet pressing because then they can get 18 tracks on one side. They can just rinse out the vinyl, get as much money back as possible. So that's kind of was the theory on why everything from the 70s, 60s, 70s and early 80s sounds high passed. But since then, things have changed a lot because things like hip hop and the 808 drum and stuff like that and sub bass in dance music that came along towards the late 80s, you needed a lot of sub bass and you needed a lot of low bass to actually make the track move because most of the track was about that. It was a feel thing. The clubs could then replay that kind of bass at that time where before it wasn't as important. If you listen to a lot of disco music, there's hardly any really low bass. There's a lot of kind of high driving bass, but not sub bass. As dance music and especially hip hop came in and you had some big kicks going on, you needed to be able to start having bass. So people didn't roll off as much bass. And if you're doing drum and bass, sometimes I've put cuts in at say 20 hertz and I'm suddenly losing loads of, loads of stuff, loads of feel. Because if you think about where the curve is, it's not just where the point of the curve is, there's, there's, it's rolling off above it. Now you will have seen this, I used to have to do this by ear, but now you can see it with a plug-in, you can see what's happening with that roll off and where it's starting and things. But going back in the day, you just had a, a knob basically that would say 60 hertz, 20, 40, and you would go with that and you'd have to listen. And it was kind of a set curve. You, you know, there's like a different shelf curve. So now you can actually see how that roll off's working. So you can then manipulate that a bit, see how tight you want that curve. But my suggestion is don't, use a high pass filter when you're mixing, uh, well saying that, when you're mixing, a lot of uh, mix engineers I know use high pass filters on the individual instruments to chop out loads of noise that's going on, just to keep it so that anything that is in that frequency range is in that frequency range, while, rather than having, say, a guitar with a load of harm and stuff going on at the bottom, get that out of the way to clean up the low end so that when you've got some sub or kicks in there, they're the only things that are in that range, keeping it nice and tight. So when I was about to just say uh, they don't use it in mixing, I would say don't use it on the mix bus because if you've done your mix correctly and you're just using it in the right places, you don't want to take away from the, the super low stuff that you might not be able to hear. I would always just leave that on. If you're going to use a mastering engineer, leave that on. He's going to have better speakers, probably, that go lower and a room that can handle the bass so that you can hear exactly what's going on in the low end. It's always better to have more low end as a mastering engineer that you can then craft rather than trying to add it on afterwards because if there's nothing to add, you can't add anything. So just keep it on there. It can get tightened up and it can be high passed at that point if need be. Sometimes I'll use high passes, as I've said previously, to kind of tighten the bass up, but that's more to do with me having that option at mastering. Please ask me any questions you have on it in the comments. 
please subscribe, ring the bell if you uh, like getting updates from me. And if you want me to master your music for you, there is a discount code below. Go to streaky.com to get signed up to the monthly newsletter where you get various nonsense that I've seen around the world over the last month. Thanks for watching, until next time, bye.